So, um, tonight, of course, we have some stuff that deals with the shutdown. Or, or as, as Fox News will have us, have, have us believe, the slim down. It's, it's, it's the slim down. The um, entire government is jogging right now. You know, just, yeah, that's you know, right. It's cardio. We're all on salary and we're having a nice little jog. And that's, that's what we're doing. It's mm-hmm. good for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we have our normal crazy nonsense as well. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is going to be, um, why well, our first one is, is going to start off pretty much. Yeah, I think it's going to set the tone. Okay, so let's go ahead and get us to beginning. Each week, the computer won't fucking work properly. Catherine goes on the world wide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Why Aren't You Working? I'm you ass. You ass machine. So lonely. Yay! Working. Sort of. Yay! Uh, Ish. 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 Esque. There we okay. go. There we go. I'm here patiently. I am bad at my job. So how's the weather down there? Warm. Rainy up here. Yeah. (laughs) Everybody at home is just laughing at me and not in the way I want them to. All right, so there have been a lot of responses to our slim down this uh, this past month. Are you working? I t- you better work. You better work. Did I? Oh, that's why it's isn't working because I ah I'm stupid. There we go. There have been a lot of responses to the government slim down, but I think this company's response has been probably the um, the most generous, I would say. Uh, an adult company is offering... Let me give you the link there. Um, free vibrators to furloughed workers. Uh, um, yeah. Bless their hearts. Um, it's an obvious joke. Yeah. Haven't they been fucked enough? <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, that's probably good to see tell furloughed workers to stick it where the sun don't shine. Vibrators.com is actually giving them the tools necessary to do it for free. Vibrators.com <laughs> asks, free vibrators for furloughed federal employees? Are you a federal employee that has been deemed non-essential? You have too little or too much time on your hands and nothing to do? Is the recent government shutdown to blame? <sighs> By ordering item V shutdown, entering shutdown as the coupon code, Furlough workers have access to a five inch long one inch diameter tool to help them relax and forget, at least for a few minutes, that their government is bending them over. Okay. What about the half of government workers that are men? If it is even half. Um, I'm not I'm not saying that men wouldn't find a use for that if they weren't, you know, creative in some way, but uh, well, on the one side, you know, you you, you bring them yeah. to you with you to bed to be helpful for your partner, and on the other side, men have holes too. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not uh, da, 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 doubting that. Um, <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, our regular co-host has been replaced with Porky Pig. Well, you see, uh, what were you did the did doing with the uh, the 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 uh, the uh, vibrator uh, vibrator vibrator the 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 I just see the people at the local food bank going, look, I will give you this for bread. Please. Please. Oh. Take the dildo and feed me. 
Please. Take the dildo and feed me. Yes. That needs to be the quote for tonight. That's the title of the episode. I wonder if you could like everybody, all 800,000 is not essential employees could all get their free dildo and take and build some sort of weapon of mass destruction out of them in response. <laughs> just using the spare parts, like use the all the engines working together. Yeah, if just I, I just imagine you ever see critters too where they all How formed in that one. Vibrators would it take to power a tank? We uh, any, any engineers in the audience, uh, work that out. Work out the, like the voltage and the amperage that goes into that. Do you ever see critters too? Where all the would take to power a tank. Did you ever see Critters 2 where all the Critters joined into that one giant ball and they just ate everything in their way? I just imagine joining all 800,000 dildos into one giant, you know, like Katamarasi, Katamari, Katam yeah, you know, and, and just having yeah. this rolling dildo just send it right at the Capitol. Uh, this giant wiggling ball. Just fucking everything in its path. <laughs> I, I would think it lands right in the middle of the Pentagon. Yeah. Right in the center. <laughs> Katamari Dildoshi. That's right, Dodger. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, that would be lovely. Well, this is another one that's getting as, uh, ascribed to the um, shutdown, which I remain a bit skeptical shall we say this is especially considering who it's coming from let's start with what happened uh this is one of those things that should not be possible and yet did boy boards plane to vegas without ticket minneapolis a nine-year-old minneapolis boy was able to get through security and onto a plane without a ticket security officials screened the boy at the airport shortly after 10 30 a.m the boy then boarded, boarded flight Delta 1651, which left for Las Vegas. The flight was not full, and the full crew became suspicious mid-flight because the boy was not on their list of unattended minors. The crew contacted Las Vegas police, who met with them upon landing and transferred the boy to Child Protection Services. The kicker here is the TSA um, is blaming the government shutdown <laughs> for the reason why the boy was allowed to get on the plane through the TSA checkpoint. Okay. Um, that kind of makes sense. I mean, the government shut down, then who will, you know, fondle our junk in the airport? Except there no was one. a guy there who was fondling junk. I guess well, he was... he's needs to fondle junk better. Yeah, really? apparently. How the, this is... Is he not trained in the art of junk fondling properly? Is this going to be the new my dog ate my homework? Oh, see, I couldn't do that. The government shut down. So, you know. Oh, yeah, of course, I couldn't check to see if a kid was getting on a plane without a ticket. The government shut down. Giant, massive fingers all pointing towards Washington, D.C. Uh, oh, no. See, I'm sorry. I couldn't mow the lawn this weekend. The government shut down. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I was going to have three episodes out today, but, you know, the government shut down. Yeah. Man, actually, yeah, it, reviewers are going to be eating that one up. What? Oh, no. We see. I, I didn't get my stuff finished because uh, the government shut down. <laughs> Ven's going to be contacting you. Yeah, I had that title card all done, but then the government shut down. So I was going to clean my room, but the government, government shut, shut down. down. <laughs> I just I. How did they did they uh, that that's the audacity of them to blame a complete breakdown in doing their fucking job. That's either not, that or that kid is really, really got something going for him. That kid's like that's a kid little fucking like Houdini. That kid's the next catch me if you can guy. I've forgotten <laughs> so much about that movie. That kid is going places. Yeah, apparently Las kid. Vegas. Yeah. Which, you that's know, if I in, in the making there. If if he could get on the plane to Vegas, I have no doubt the motherfucker would have been gambling before the end of the weekend if he hadn't been caught. Mm -hmm. Little bastard bit, snake eyes, boom, you're just rolling the shit. And then he'd immediately take over the mob there, all of them. Like within a day. He's just that lucky. You know, someone at Touchstone Pictures is furiously scribbling this down <laughs> right now as we speak. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Okay, we, we've all had issues with our significant others time and again. We, we, we have, it's a give and take in, in a, any relationship. You have to be able to allow for some things and then allow, you know, understand when they need their stuff. to. It's, it's a back and forth. And sometimes it doesn't quite work out that way. Unfortunately, I, I don't think this is quite the way to settle such issues. This comes to us from Texas. Um, Texas man afraid of wife fakes kidnapping to go drinking with friends. A man in Texas apparently wanted to party with his friends so bad he staged his own kidnapping so his wife wouldn't give him a hard time about leaving the house. Now he faces criminal charges and likely an even angrier wife. According to police, Rogelio Andeverde, I think I'm saying that right, 34 of Edinburgh in the Texas-Mexico border region, was with his wife at home and the two masked men barged in their house carrying guns. They forced him from his home and his hysterical wife called the police in a panic. Dozens of law enforcement officers fanned out and searched for him, but investigations were going nowhere and police started to become suspicious. Um, Speaking of cliche movie pitches. <laughs> and Averde thought he had outsmarted everyone. He casually returned home and said the kidnapper showed mercy and had set him free. <laughs> this Rogelio was the play. Averde wants to get out of the house. <laughs> he has a wife that is considerate of his own health and doesn't want him to go out drinking because of a severe problem. So he devises a plan. Yeah, I can hear the trailer voice. Yeah, going on. Herpy, dear, I can dear, see storyboards. Dear. I can see like the budget plan. I can I can see this happening. All right. Um, same thing for the lead. Um, Kevin James. <laughs> right. Kevin James. And for the wife, I don't know. Uh, someone ridiculously um, over who's in everything. <laughs> Who's pretty and in everything? I don't know anymore because I stopped paying uh, the fuck Benedict attention. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch as the wife. Benedict as Cumberbatch. As the wife that he has to get yeah, away yeah. from. That, that, I would. And I would. as the guy that he pays to pretend to kidnap him. Oh, yeah. That, I would watch yes. that. And I'd watch anything that, talking I'd, toaster buddy. I'd watch anything Benedict Cumberbatch was in, even this. So, I just, <sighs> this was his plan. He was, he really planned that he was going to go out, go drinking, come back and go, they let me go. Foolproof. Bang. Crime of the century. Right there. Wasn't that a plot point on Breaking Bad, actually? Although, it actually, he was kidnapped, and then his excuse was, um, cancer. Yes. The cancer kidnapped me. <laughs> Best show on TV. Anyway. No, no, no. He should have gone with Fugue State. Fugue state. That always yeah, works. Yeah. It's like the get out of jail free card. You know, you show up at 3 a.m. covered from head to toe in liquid latex. Fugue state. Fugue state. Fugue state. The government I shut down. <laughs> Ambien. That's the other one. Yeah. I had a fugue state and Ambien because the government shut down. And Yahtzee. Of, we got to work the dog eating the homework in there somewhere. Yeah. My dog ate Ambien and then my homework, causing me to go into a fugue state and shut the government down myself. And, and not only that, because of all his bullshit, he got arrested for this. Well, I guess now he does get some time away from the wife. <laughs> Just he's going to become someone else's wife. Oh, quite oh, I, wasn't oh big of, I know. I you went I, there, so I didn't have to. I know. I'm awful. Speaking of women who are upset, um, I don't quite understand this one. This comes from uh, Massachusetts, and yeah, I don't get it. I really, I, I, I don't get it. There's, there's very little in this story to explain it, and maybe you okay, will understand it. I don't. It's just, it, this seems like another Mad Libs headline. Woman took off clothes in slushy machine attack. Wait, wait, she attacked the slushy she machine? She attacked the slushy machine. Clothes. Um, she took off her own clothes or she took off the slushy machine's clothes? She took off her own clothes. Stupid, stupid question. Back up. Never mind. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't. I have you did ever she seen attack uh, with a slushy machine, or did she actually attack the slushy machine? She attacked itself? the slushy machine. That's a very poorly worded headline. Yeah. Police use a taser and pepper spray to subdue a woman they say removed all of her clothes while attacking a slushy machine. Brenda Diaz of Holyoke had her two children in the car at the time. Brenda Cruz, state police were called to the gas station where they found 26 year old woman inside causing damage to the machine. Troopers called uh, police to assist them. A taser and spray was used to subdue Diaz, but Cruz says the suspect took off all of her clothes and continued to fight, kick and yell until they finally got her under arrest. Okay, let's put our brains together. <laughs> Ow. Let's try and find a narrative in which this makes sense. Like, let's give her motivation and a backstory in which <laughs> this this is plausible. I um, her parents divorced after a uh, terrible fight over a slushy machine. Um. She she lost a dog as a child when a slushy machine fell on it. Um, she has a uh, hmm, she attacked. Okay, she's not attracted to the slushy machine because yeah. um, she's attacking it. But still, she got naked for it. Um, I, help me out. Help me out. I, I think that me. getting naked was some sort of Braveheart maneuver there to to fe- to cause the enemy slushy machine to fear her. You know, she probably painted her face blue. Well, with the raspberry, she probably put the raspberry slushy on her face. And, okay. You know, when it when you don't have woad, you use the raspberry slushy juice. It's the same damn thing. Perfectly logical. Perfectly logical. But then she used. OK, so she attacks the machine and then uses its blood to paint herself. <laughs> um, it's like, you know, I'm suddenly reminded of those little dogs who bark at, at uh, washing. You ever seen a little dog barking at a dryer? Yeah. It goes round and round. It's dryer. It's dryer. It's dryer. Slushy bark, machine bark, going bark. around and around. I just suddenly just snap and, and the same damn thing. Same premise right there. I love that she was so pissed off at that slushy machine. It took to taser and a pepper spray. That's some dedication. That thing pissed her off somehow. Wait, I got it. Brain freeze. That's cause cause of all this. Gotta be. And she blamed the slushy machine, and she thought it had to pay. Yeah, you know what? It it. I could see that your brain freezed up, and then suddenly, madness. I. And then suddenly, uh, the rest of your body temperature temperature goes haywire. So you get naked, and then you blame your your state on the slushy machine, and so you punish it. And now we understand her a little better. Brenda Diaz, she's ne- and you got to imagine her kids are out in the car just watching mom do this like. 20 years, those kids are going to be doing the same thing. It's a it's the start of their life. Different. It's, you know, people, children of people who abuse slushy machines go on to abuse slushy machines themselves. Mm hmm. Which vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Our last two, this the the ante just leaps on these last two. Oh god, um, this one's Florida, and I gotta say the, the guy in this in this story is so happy to have his picture taken. Wow, we this is yet another edition of leave the people in the drive through alone. Really leave the I people in the this. drive. Oh boy, um, I. I feel so bad for people who have to work at McDonald's because of shit like this. And that's saying something because it's McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Pantsless, masturbating McDonald's customer, 69. This is a septuagenarian, ladies and gentlemen. Tried to force drive through worker to touch him and I'm putting him on the big screen because he is so happy Oh, I can't. I guess that's he's didn't work. adorable. He's so happy to be. The, he's just hi, everybody. Looks like your grandpa. I'm not that happy. I think that's more embarrassed and just you know trying to shrug it off. You know, like yeah, yeah. That was fun. 
After mm. picking up food from McDonald's drive through window, a pantsless 69-year-old Florida man allegedly tried to force a female employee to touch him as he masturbated in the front seat of his vehicle. Steve Orville Clemens, uh, that just... Clemens. <laughs> was it the drive through Wednesday of a Wildwood McDonald's and the cashier turned to give him his change? At that point, they realized Clemens was sans pants and pleasuring himself. Clemens then allegedly grabbed the cashier's hand and attempted to pull her hand into his vehicle. After pulling her hand away from Clemens, the driver shut the drive, the worker shut the drive through window and called 911. Seeing the above mugshot, Clemens was later apprehended at a nearby gas station. While pantsless, he had draped a t shirt over his lap. Free on $500 bail, he's scheduled to be arranged October 9th. I feel so, I feel bad for that poor woman. I. I, yeah, I can't. I can't joke about this. Just, that was awful. You're just doing your job. How dare you bring this on here and force me to make a joke about this? Wow. You're just you're doing your job. You're you're just going along <laughs> every day, and it's not a good job. It's a shit job. Yeah. And you got to deal with this shit. Can we all just like you know pour some out on the sidewalk for this person. And I just, know. At least. <sighs> Poor woman. I have to. How do you get to this point in your life where this ah. is this is your weekend? This is the plan you have. You know, whatever happened to bowling? <laughs> I mean, it worked for the dude. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out, you grab a couple beers, you go bowling, you hang with your friends. You don't go accost the woman in the fucking McDonald's to touch your pee pee. Mm -hmm. This this just. And 69 years old, you're officially old enough to know better. Maybe he's old enough not to care. You know what? I'm going to hell already. <laughs> Let's see how far I can ride this crazy thing. Yeah, you want this is when you want the deluxe suite in hell. You want the yeah. penthouse. Mm hmm. The special treatment. Special, special room. Speaking of special, our last one tonight is. Oh. I think this is the epitome of that doesn't go there. This is one of those things I would never in my life have ever thought I'd have to report on because it's one of those common sense, so common sense ones. You couldn't dare me to do this. You couldn't for any amount of money get me to do this. I'm serious. You could offer me a million dollars and I would not do this. OK, you built it up. What is it? Comes to us from the UK. I'm going to let you read it first before I show it to the audience. because I just want to see get them to see your reaction to it. There you go. All right. Waiting for it. <laughs> there you go. You know, I'm just going to duck out of frame and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, can I read the title? Go ahead. <clears throat> Firefighters rescue man's penis from toaster, then warn people to start using, quote, common sense. <clears throat> Firefighters came to the rescue of a man in distress when he got his penis stuck in a toaster. I have to say that again. Penis stuck in a toaster. <laughs> it's unclear what exactly. Was it the on? What? Was it on? God only knows. <laughs> um, it's unclear what exactly humiliated Jones and men had been up to, but fortunately, London's finest arrived to extricate his manhood from the electrical device. I love how polite they are. Extricate his manhood from the electrical device. It sounds so, you know, that's a journalist who decided, you know what? I might as well just I don't use many ten dollar words, but for this, I think I'm going to. I'm going to spice it up a little bit because this story deserves it. I've joked about this. I've never thought someone would really. In fact, I feel kind of responsible because I'm like, can you stick your penis in a toaster? Let's find out. It's like, Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take? No. Spooks. Mm -hmm. Okay, writer's block. Grilled dick cheese sandwich? No. Oh. No. No. Everybody in the channel is demanding to know, was it plugged in? God, I hope not. 
I'm trying to reach for a joke. But the only thing I'm coming up with is Pinini. <laughs> Something involving that word. But it's just, you know, drawing a blank right now. My God, I hope it wasn't plugged in because, oh, the smell. I'm just, it's just, uh, oh, God. Uh, that would be something that would, you, mm. this is one of those things you shouldn't have to tell another human being not to do. Well, do we have any context for this? Was it a dare? Was he, oh, no. did he does he live alone? No, apparently uh, this comes from a story where a bunch of people have been put, apparently, this is from the, the same story they're talking. The, the fire department is just pretty much doing a story on who has put their shit where in crazy places. One of them, apparently, they had to um, get a uh, someone else out of a vacuum cleaner. Um, they've had to free 79 people from handcuffs in the last three years alone, which they are blaming on Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> well, OK, that exists before Fifty Shades of Grey. BD... Fifty Shades of Grey did not invent BDSM. No, but it has encouraged it. Yeah. And they've enc- and what's worse, they've encouraged stupid people to participate. Man's arm stuck in a portal loo. I'm reading the list now. Now see a that child could- with its head trapped in an ironing board. A what? I, I'm just reading the list of things that they're dealing with. An adult stuck in a child's toy car. <laughs> There's a there's a mental image. Um, I'm regressing. I'm regressing. <laughs> five. It's oh, my God. Five what? incidents involving people's hands being stuck in shredders. Girl. Don't do that. Girl. Don't. What are you thinking? Girl. Wow, now this has got a, kind of one of those, which would you rather have? Your hand in a shredder or your dick in a toaster? Which would you rather? Well, I use my hands more often than, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to kind of start yeah, to I think about that, that From a practical standpoint. <sighs> and of course, nine instances of men with rings stuck on their penises. Mm-hmm. I've never understood that whole thing because this is what happens. You have to have the fire department come out. There's 20 full grown men around you in rubber outfits all watching while they cut something off of your penis. It's like the worst Brie ever. Uh, or Briss or Brie. I don't know how you fucking say it. I'm not Jewish. I apologize. But it's, I'm done. I just, oh, God. So that was this week. What have we learned? Well, I guess what we learned is don't stick your dick in a toaster. We learned too much. And we are worse people for it. Did we have to learn that? Did we have to? Did did we have to have that lesson? I... Isn't it amazing? There's nine billion people on this planet. There's over, well, seven billion people. There's over 20,000 years of recorded human history. And yet we still find new and ridiculous things to do with our genitals. Never run dry. Well, stupidity will never run dry. We've learned that everything. Someone in the chat said that I came in on the wrong week. (laughs) Is Is there a right week? There's not a right week. There's never a good week for this. Is it, we've learned that everything that is that can go wrong ever is because the government is shut down. Mm. You're just, you know, you run over your neighbor's dog. The, the government was shut down. You you forget, you, you know, you lock your keys in the car. Government was shut down. Everything and anything. Government was shut down. You cancel a Joss Whedon show. Government was shut down. Which actually wasn't the last government shutdown during Buffy. I'm just saying. No. <laughs> um. Eden. So it, it, we've learned that there are better ways to communicate in a marriage than faking a kidnapping. Hmm. I think. 
They've been married, so I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure on this one. Yeah. It's a, a safe bet. Um, and we learned that everyone could use a sex toy every now and then. I think, especially in their darkest hour. I think just I I think the best thing is that the image of a of a giant catamar, catamari of dicks. Just, it's a beautiful image. Eight hundred thousand of them. Eight. That's that's a big fucking ball of dildos. Rolling and vibrating. That's an earthquake right there. Um, and of and we finally learned this week that McDonald's drive-through employees have a tough fucking job. Be nice to them, because they never know if that next guy pulling up just wants to, you know, say thank you for their chicken nuggets or, or violate yeah. them. Yeah. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Katamari Dildoshi. That's that that is the title for this week. That that, that one's just Katamari Dildoshi. I'm gonna use I'm running with that one. I'm running with that one. <laughs> no. That's all I have to say. Oh, I'm sorry, Bunky. Are you okay? No. 